Hello everyone, um, I'm Sensei and welcome to this episode of Rebalancing Time. And um, I am gonna do something that is very difficult for, for me, um, which is to try to make a short video. <laughs> My videos tend to be long and explaining. Um, so let's see how much information I can get in how short of a time today. I won't ever be on TikTok, I don't think, but we'll, we'll try. Um, so the, the topic that brings me to talk about today is curse lifting, curses and curse lifting. Um, the curse lifting is one of many shamanic skills um, in the shamanic tool belt. As I was um, working with someone this morning, I was explaining that um, the term shaman is an umbrella term. It is a very nebulous term. Um, just the same way that if you said someone is a doctor, well, are they a brain surgeon or are they a podiatrist? Do they work on, you know, what what, what kind of um, doctor are they? What do they do? What do they work with? And shaman is another um, umbrella term like that. But um, one of the um, modalities that I've been called in to do is, is curse lifting. Um, because if you've been following along with the, the threads of our ancestors series, um, where I've been working with um, spirits of people whose land was stolen from them, um, we've got these principles of rem remember, they want their stories want to be remembered. Um, but on the spirit side, they need to be willing to let go and to lay to rest. They may or may not forgive, that's not a requirement. Um, but they have to be willing to let it go and lay it to rest um, in order for um, the ancestral debt to be resolved. Um, and if, if that particular ancestral debt takes the form of a curse, where not only did somebody do something wrong, but the person who was wronged through a curse whether it be verbal, they said it, they, it's not often in writing, it's usually something that's, that's screamed at somebody, you, I curse you and all of your yada yadas to come. I mean, we've, we've all heard stories like that, we've all, but you know, what does that actually mean? Well, um, curses, once they are laid, especially if they were specifically, you know, a curse on your family, a curse on all of your descendants, they will follow that family line. And I just worked with a person who um, experienced some incredible losses, including um, of a very young person in their generation um, who were impacted by this, this curse. Um, and the thing about curses is that um, Okay, I need, I need to back up here and, and talk about the way that I experience um, working with spirits in the afterlife. Um, so a lot of people talk about spirits crossing over um, when, they, when they die. They're moving from the land of the living where we all are right here, if, if we have flesh and blood, if we still have meat suits that <laughs> we're moving. Um, to the land of the dead where the living cannot go. I have never been to the land of the dead. I have been to a portal where I can assist people to get there, but I can't actually go there and I can't actually see what's there uh, because I'm still living. That's not, that's not my place to be. So there's this kind of meet in between um, um, area, let's just call say, that um, if you've ever seen the show Stranger Things, um, it's, it's, it's like the upside down in Stranger Things. It's sort of a mirror image of our world, but it sort of gets distorted because, and it's, it's, it's a really unhealthy, not a place that is, that sustains life. Um, and they're still able because they're they've they're, they've shed their earthly body they've become energy beings they can impact energy a lot 
more easily than they can impact, you know, pushing something and actually having physical contact with something. Um, but although I'm told that that's, that's possible sometimes. Um, but if someone lays a curse and they want this nasty business to follow that person's family no matter how long they, they live, um, guess what? They may not know this. I'm guessing that they didn't know this or they wouldn't have done it in the first place. But if you lay a curse, in, in my experience, you have to stay behind it to enforce it. So you're damning, damning somebody to all eternity, but you're damning yourself too in doing that. And so they're getting angrier and angrier at, that they're not able to escape this themselves and they're, they're still tied up in this um, in the fam as long as the family line continues. Um, so if you can imagine how many of these kinds of curses, because the, the, the land, the stolen land, the, the, there was a lot of cursing going on above people who, uh, who, who stole the land. Um, so we've got so much energetic gunk that is being laid at the feet of those who are living, who probably have no family memory of the time back in 1884 when, you know, um, so... So I'm just, uh, sorry, I, I, I don't work well under pressure. I don't work well trying to do things fast. And I have a limited amount of time to do this video here. Um, so I'm just checking in with what needs to be said right here, right now. Doing a little bit of grounding. I also wanted to give a shout out. I'm wearing my um, Brighton Bush Hot Springs Phoenix Rising from the Ashes t-shirt today. Um, because I'm really hoping that we can do a lot of rising from the ashes, a lot of lifting those spirits. Uh, a lot of people think of of the land of of the the land of the dead as being up, like a lot of people's conceptions of heaven is up. I consider it a a, a lateral move. Um, so that's just how I work with it. Um, so in order for curses to be lifted, someone, a, tra a trained or experienced um, practitioner, needs to go in to work with that aggrieved person who laid the curse in the first place and get them to unlift it. Is, is, in my experience, that's the best way to lift a curse because that gets it right at the source. We're gonna get them to let go and lay it to rest. Probably not forgive, if they've hold on to a, a grudge that long, probably not forgive, but dangling that carrot of, hey, you can get out of this pretty awful place that you've been stuck in too, because you're making them get stuck. Um, and cross over to the land of the dead where you belong. And where you can reunite with the, with source, be in the wisdom of the oneness of all things again, not just the very limited view that we get um, from living on earth during this one particular lifetime of which you may have many. Um, but we forget um, all of that before we incarnate, most of us. So I just want to give a shout out to everyone who is stepping up and doing this courageous work of digging into their own ancestral lines. And I am here to help. Um, I, if you are, if you are interested, I just ask you to please be patient with me because I really want to get um, my, my electronic format um, a little more finalized before I can give you my, my contact information that's kind of open to the public or open to everybody. 
Um, my helping spirits really do not like me playing favorites um, because um, it it creates it always creates jealousies. It always creates imbalance. I mean, my my mom, my mother, when when we were growing up, she tried to keep things so even between between my sibling and I. Um, and I am so grateful for, for it because um, she, she taught me so much um, in, in that regard. And a lot about curse lifting is about bringing, bringing things back to even Steven. Excuse me. In how, whatever form that, that would take. Um, so I'm getting an image of feet, feet walking here. Um, oh, so I wanted to talk, um, a little bit about what does that even mean crossing over? Um, does that mean that I'll never be able to, um, to contact or speak to my, my, my dad relatives again? Um, and the answer is no. No, it, it's not a final thing. And men, many, many, many pe people have been visited by, um, by their relatives and had wonderful positive experiences in doing that. And that, that can definitely happen. It's just that um, at, when, I, when I cross people over, sometimes there's a little bit of a, a time lag. Um, they need a little bit of time to get acclimated to the transition from again, this one lifetime, this one body's experience to being one with, with source, whatever you want to call source. Um, again, and, um, but after that, if, if everyone is open to it, it certainly is possible to, to have, um, some form of open communication and, and many, many cultures have, have this built in to, to the society as well. Um, festivals like Dia de los Muertos, um, Samhain, Obon, um, in different cultures all over the world have a kind of festival of the dead where there's this few days a year that we can meet and kind of party and get to know, get to know each other again, celebrate each other, and then we go back to our own spaces because it's sort of like, it's sort of like the proverbial mother-in-law um, you really don't want the dead to be in your business all the time. You, they, they have their, they have their own work. They have their own, um, their own interests and we have ours. So sometimes, um, a dead person who is showing up and kind of doing this, um, trying to get into your business, it's because when you are dead, if you're not all the way crossed over, if, if your death has not been tended in a way that all of your affairs were, were wrapped up at the time of your death, which for most people, it may be centuries since that has happened. That used to be a function in society. That used to be job of, of somebody who, who was like a shaman. Um, so that means that they are still in that in between, that, that upside down place um that they still have business that they need to take care of only they no longer have a body to do it so they need to co-opt someone who's in the living to take care of their business for them and so that's also why whenever possible as i'm working i'm not just working on your dead relative that you know that that, that is having a problem i'm looking how far back did that go when did that first start? And is, is that really, did that really start with this generation? I'm guessing most times probably not. So I'm going back to the root, the source, so that I can resolve everybody who came between the original dispute, issue, atrocity, whatever it was, and now. And that, that um, going forward with, with that, lifted and, it, and it's described as being lighter, uh, more possibilities. Um, I feel uh, feeling unstuck maybe. Um, 
that that feeling can go forward to all of your living relatives now and all of your descendants into the future. So I know this is a, a really um, foreign topic that, you know, society, we, we don't usually talk about stuff like this. Um, and that's why, you know, I consider myself something like a spiritual septic tank, tech, septic tank technician. Um, that I'm here to clean out the backlog, the nasty, nasty backlog of whatever junk, whatever awful filth that humans have thrown at each other across the centuries and across the millennia. I'm saying, or do I? I'm saying bring it. Um, because I trust that my helping spirits bring bring me folks to work with in the right time in the right order that that I can take it on and I can handle it and that I also have help along the way to to do that. Um so So if you are interested um no, you can't. You can't find me on Facebook and you can't find me on LinkedIn yet because I use my real name on that. And I have never yet used my real name on Rebalancing Time. So it's coming soon. When I, when I have the website, I'll, I'll kind of go public with it, I promise. Um, so for right now, um, just suffice it to say, I am... I, I'm, it's, it's coming. I'm working on it. Um, technology is, is not my forte, but I'm doing the best that I can. And I hold all of you in whatever situation that you find yourself in, whatever horrible, um, oh, see my timer's going off. Um, whatever, whatever atrocities were done, we can make it right together. I truly, truly believe that. And that's why today of all days, um, I'm doing my very first group ancestral healing session um, via Zoom. Um, it's coming up in a couple hours. I'm not gonna be able to get this video out before I do it. Um, but at whatever time that you're watching this, if you can hold, hold this in your heart for those who are stepping into the healing today, because time and space don't matter. Time and space do not matter. Um, so I thank you. I love you all. Uh, if you have questions, please put them in the comments. I'm, I'm more than happy to, to share more and uh, give me some ideas for a new video. All right. Take care. Love you. Bye-bye.